Hey guys, this is Kat, and some people have asked questions about how I'm designing the rings that I've been showing on Facebook. So I'm creating a video to show you using ZBrush to create this scroll ring and how it's done. So I start out using ZBrush, and I'm drawing around a cylinder using something called a masking brush. So I can just draw a design. It's like painting, literally, in a paint program. And getting those scrolls the way I like them, sort of refining the design. But this will eventually be extruded into the ring. Now I'm thickening these up a little bit, so it'll be easier to cast. And the center area will have an oval-shaped stone, so I'm just going to fill that in. Now I bring back the rest of the cylinder and I'm isolating the groups so I can eliminate the background. And then I can extrude this into a three-dimensional shape that becomes a ring. The sides are a little rough, so I'm gonna polish that. And then turn off these poly groups, which is the colors. Turn that off so I can start designing in silver. Now here I'm using a brush called an inflate brush. So it was a little bit wide. I need that a sharper design, so I'm using a smaller brush and just starting to define these scrolls. So making them thicker. If they're not tall enough on the ring, they won't stand out when the ring is printed. So it's important to have those designs actually stick out a little bit. Now I keep zooming in and out so I can see what this looks like from afar because you're gonna be wearing this as a ring that's fairly small. So they need to be able to be seen. And then I'm just doodling here filling out those curves. I had no idea I was going to put leaves on it, so that was kind of a last-minute addition. And I'm just making this stand out. I'm going over my lines so they stand out a little bit more. And they look kind of lumpy, but that's okay because we'll fix that in one of the next steps. We'll also smooth out like the insides of those holes and such. They're a little sharp, so we'll be fixing that here shortly as well. Now I'm using something called a pinch tool that makes these peaks, I guess, of the lines a little bit sharper. And that just means when I cast that, those will be finer lines, it'll be a little bit more delicate design. If I left them thicker like those leaves are right now, those would be wider. They would represent as a little bit wider or fatter line. Now I'm seeing some irregularities that are over um, with the shape of the curves. So I'm going to use another tool called a move tool to come back in here and gently shape those so they have a nice graceful curve. So that's why I didn't care what they look like in the beginning. I can even pull that leaf out so it's a little more leaf-like. Now I'm switching to another brush called a clay fill brush and that fills in low areas and makes them a little bit smoother and more refined. So I don't want to fill up the whole thing. I want those lines to protrude and this to be a nice, you know, just a nice design that has some has some smoothness to it. Now I'm also softening the outside of it, giving it a nice transition between the part sticking out. And that looks nice. But now I'm going to start adding the stone or the bezel for the stone. And I decided that I wanted an oval, so I smooth that out and bring it up into place and check the size. And I think it's a little bit too big. So I'm going to shrink this down. And this is actually, the actual size of the stone, but it's not the bezel yet. So I'm bringing in a ring and squashing that to make it an oval as well. And then I need to make that taller. So the wall of this will be a little taller. So check the size, increase the height of that a little bit and smooth it out. Now using the ring and the plug that we created a little while back, we're going to cut out an area of the bezel it gives a shelf for the stone to sit, and that looks good. Now I'm curious what it's gonna look like with a stone, so I'm using a sphere tool that I bring in and squash it, turn on some transparency so I can see. So I'll make that the right shape. And this one's just a representation for the moment, it's not truly the stone, but I'll make it blue and then turn the ring back silver so I like it, I think that looks really nice. So I'm adding some ball decorations here, but I think they're too close to the bezel and that'll be hard to set the stone. So I'm pulling out a little shelf 
and adding a sphere. So I'm using an insert sphere tool. And I like that, a little more delicate. And I think it goes well, it should cast well. Now I feel like the sides are missing something. So this is where I start playing around with it. I'm gonna hide the back so I can't make any changes to it. And I'm playing around with these indentations, but I think that once it's cast, those will be in a low area and it'll lose the effect. So those really need to stick out. I try a few more times, it's not quite a love connection. So now I'm gonna make them raised. So as I use that inflate tool again and check it from afar, eh, there's a scroll. And I'm liking that there's a design around the stone. So I go back and add that, and I think that actually looks pretty good. So I'm thickening those up a bit and then using that pinch tool to tighten those lines and make them more delicate. And I like it, I think that's a nice look. So I try adding a little more decoration. I think it's too cluttered. So when all else fails, add another ball. And I like the ring. So I think it's pretty much done. So there's one last thing I've noticed though, is that the band is basically same thickness all around. So here I'm using a cylinder, creating a cylinder, moving it down a little bit so it tapers that ring. And then I cut that out. So that gives it a nice graceful tapered band. And that's the final ring. But I'm going to start doing some tutorials here, already done a few. If you're interested, follow me on YouTube.